Hi, I'm Adam Smeester. This is Smeester's Corner. Welcome back. So today's topic is what Harvard has to say about happiness. So there's this guy, his name is Brooks, and he teaches at Harvard. And he teaches a class on happiness. And apparently it's one of the more popular classes on campus. So what I'm going to share with you are some of the things that you would learn in his class on happiness. So I'm going to break it down just a little bit. So according to Harvard, there are three parts to happiness. Enjoyment, satisfaction, and purpose. And these have to be balanced. The cool thing is, which I will talk about later, is love can satisfy all three of these. So you give more more love and you end up getting more love. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. So according to Harvard, the first piece to happiness is enjoyment. Enjoyment is different from pleasure. They happen in different parts of the brain. In the pleasure center of your brain, you're conscious of the pleasure and your brain tells you it wants more of it, so you seek out more of it. Okay, that's a little bit different. For example, watching a show might be pleasurable, but it's not the same thing as enjoyment. To get enjoyment out of that show, you would have to watch the show and then think about the show and then maybe apply some of what you saw in that show to your life and act it out or practice it, it's stimulating to your mind. So that's the difference between enjoyment and just pleasure. According to research, happier people, people who score higher on the happiness surveys, they enjoy watching documentaries, they're curious people, they read more because they like to learn, and they have an active mind. The second piece to happiness, according to Harvard, is satisfaction. Satisfaction is the joy you get from meeting a goal, a job well done, and earning your success. So basically, it's a reward in return for hard effort. That is satisfaction. The thing about satisfaction is our brains are hardwired because of evolution, to never feel satisfied enough. So we'll find some satisfaction and then we lose it. And then we have to do something to get that feeling back because if we were just permanently satisfied, we would all die because we would never do anything. So we have to go do something and earn the satisfaction and then we feel satisfied. This keeps us from being lazy, it keeps us on our feet, and it keeps us ready for the next challenge. One key to finding satisfaction is Look for satisfaction in the permanent, not the temporary. So temporary things like money, fame, that sort of thing. Look for it in the permanent. Things like love, family, a community, like being a part of something that's bigger than just you. This is different than just needing items. Needing items would probably go back to what we talked about in the first one to pleasure which is not a source of happiness. The third part to happiness, according to Harvard, is finding the purpose and meaning in your life. This is the hardest one to attain, and it's kind of complex. So I have a whole other Smeester's Corner dedicated to purpose and meaning. To find purpose and meaning, you have to know yourself. It's tough to find purpose and meaning if you don't know yourself. You have to know what you're made of, which means you have to know your limits and what you're capable of. Those things, that's part of knowing yourself. But here's the thing. You probably don't really know what those things are unless you haven't suffered a little bit. Right now in our society, we try to focus on everything we can do to not suffer because for us, suffering equals feeling bad and we don't wanna feel bad. In the short run, suffering causes unhappiness. In the long run, getting through suffering leads to finding meaning. So if you focus all your energy on not suffering, you will probably never find a lot of meaning. What you should focus your energy on is strengthening yourself so that when you do encounter suffering, you can get through it. Having a strong character really helps with getting through suffering. And again, I have a whole other Smeester's Corner on character and how to build your character. Today, it seems, according to Arthur Brooks, who teaches the class on Harvard, we try to avoid suffering as much as possible relative to our ancestors in the past. One example of this is we don't put ourselves out there. We don't put ourselves in a position to feel vulnerable. So fewer people are in relationships, fewer people are getting married because they think, well, if I put myself in this position, what if I get hurt? So they just 
avoid the position or they self-sabotage the relationship or the potential relationship before it even starts because they're afraid of putting themselves out there. They're afraid of being vulnerable because what if? Here's something to think about. People who experience trauma end up having more growth in their life than people who have not experienced trauma. They are more likely to appreciate what they have on a deeper level. They are less likely to really value what other people think. And they don't worry about the small stuff. The older you get, the happier people tend to get. So ha older people are happier than younger people. And here's one reason why. The older you get, you realize that things aren't permanent. So when you're younger and you're going through unhappiness or you're going through a trauma or something, you think that the feelings you're feeling in that moment are permanent and that they're never going to go away. Like this is maybe how it's going to be. The older you get, the more experience you have and you realize that that's not the case, that this is temporary thing that you just need to get through. They know that that situation is not going to last. So to sum up, here are some things that you don't want to do to find happiness. So don't chase money, pleasure, uh, power, fame, and all fame really is, is you're just chasing the admiration of other people. That's basically what fame is. So that also would include social media followers. Like if you're trying to get more followers and you're, all you're focused on is that, you will never reach happiness if those are your goals. These are lies that say that they will make you happy and these can't be the end goal. So lastly, there are four things that you do need to chase if you want to be happy. And happy people all have these four things in common. Family, faith, friendship, and meaningful work. Faith is just believing in something bigger than yourself. So whatever that thing is, okay, it's the big picture stuff. Then you have family and friendship, which is support systems for yourself. So they support you, you support them, you feel needed, they feel needed by you. And the last one is meaningful work, which it could be like serving other people in some way. So those are some of the things that you would learn if you were taking the happiness class at Harvard by Arthur Brooks. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.